Hello, I'm Polly Putnam. I'm one of the curators for Historic Royal Palaces. We are in one of two rooms um, which were dedicated to the making and preparing and serving of chocolate. Chocolate was drunk in Central America, we know from archaeological evidence, from about 1500 BC. Chocolate within Mayan culture is a royal drink. It's used in marriage ceremonies, it's used in currency. This is because inherently chocolate is difficult to grow and difficult to prepare. So right from its earliest origins, there's a kind of added value to it. Chocolate gets introduced to England probably in about the 1640s. The earliest written work on chocolate mentions that it was drunk in the court of Charles I. Obviously, when Cromwell comes along, he and his more puritanical followers aren't going to be drinking something as delicious as chocolate. However, what happens is Charles II revives this tradition. He introduces a chocolate maker called Solomon de la Fere in 1682. Charles II has his own special chocolate recipe, and this includes the most expensive things you could possibly imagine. It includes ambergris, it includes chili pepper, cardamom, and all kinds of spices. By the time you get to the reign of Queen Anne, we see that she's actually making chocolate drinking part of the formal court ritual. We know from her lady of the bedchamber, Abigail Masson, that part of her morning ritual, her levee, was the fact that the lady of the bedchamber had to kneel down and serve Queen Anne chocolate. Indeed, Queen Anne, we know, is one of the most prolific chocolate drinkers of all our kings and queens. We know from her private bills that she was buying enough chocolate for 30 pints a month. When George I arrives from Hanover, he's actually in rather straitened circumstances. He doesn't have personal access to large pools of money in the way that previous kings and queens did. He has to petition for, to Parliament for all of his expenses. So it might seem strange that one of the, the most extravagant things you could possibly imagine, a personal chocolate maker, is still something that he'd be willing to pay for. However, because chocolate had become so much part of the English court experience, if he stopped serving chocolate, people are going to become upset.